Welcome everyone today to the new session of Red Hat OpenShift Streams for Apache Kafka workshop. So today we are going to walk you through a very cool workshop of our new product. The product is available today uh, for use. You can try it and it's a very exciting thing. You're going you're gonna to see it. We're going to show you all the details. So what are we doing today? The agenda for today is we're going to do a quick introduction of OpenShift Streams for Apache Kafka. Later on, I'm just going to give you the workshop details. Um, there is a guide that maybe our team can uh, paste the link for that guide on the chat so you guys can start uh, using it today. Let me see if I can. I have here the two links that you're going to need for today. And then after that, Bernard, uh, he's going to walk you through the, um, the whole lab and a workshop. And we are here all for you for Q&A. So let's get started with the Red Hat OpenShift streams for Apache Kafka. So Red Hat OpenShift, so Red Hat has been expanding their open hybrid cloud uh, vision in the last year. And what this means, we're trying to make sure that we provide full stack management support and a unified experience in the hybrid cloud environment. And the way that we're doing this is by presenting a new set of cloud services. As you can see it on the diagram, we have three cloud services. The first one is platform services. The second one is application services. And the third one is data services. If you look at it in the diagram and you look at the bottom line of it, what you find here are the cloud providers. And basically these are here because all our cloud services run on top of each one of these cloud providers. We have joint offerings. So you can actually deploy the solutions that you want and the cloud provider of your choice. Right now on the platform services, we have a few offerings for Manage OpenShift, our main platform, and you can deploy those in the cloud provider of your choice. What we're doing now as expanding our vision is to provide a set of application and data services on top of that platform services. Those services are natively integrated with OpenShift and the goal is to provide you with a unified platform that allows you to build cloud native applications. Today, we're gonna spend all our time on the middle one there, Red Hat OpenShift streams for Apache Kafka. So what is it? So OpenShift Streams for Apache Kafka is a fully hosted and managed Kafka service for stream-based applications. It has been designed for IT developments, development teams that want to incorporate streaming data or streams processing data into applications that are looking to deliver real-time experiences or digital experiences to your customers. There are a few benefits this solution brings to you. The first one is faster application velocity because this solution is self-service. You get access immediately to the environments and you can get start, start developing immediately. The second one is that it has been designed to simplify the application life cycle across hybrid cloud environments. And basically what that means is that we made it very, very simple for you that independently of where your application lives, you can connect today to OpenShift Streams for Apache Kafka. And the third one is that Apache Kafka as a technology by itself is not enough. And we understand that. So what we're doing is we're creating a Kafka ecosystem that will provide you with more and more cloud services and that will support the building, deploying, and scaling applications that will help you out on deliver those real-time experiences or to create a stream-based applications, okay? And those can be deployed wherever you want. On the diagram on the left, what I want you to remember from this diagram is that at the core, we have the Kafka cluster. So we're providing you with a dedicated instance that's only for yourself. There, you will be able to have your brokers and your topics, as many topics as you want. But what we have included to the rest of the solutions, it's a, a, a lot of functional features and functionality that makes this a much better experience to you. 
So we added metrics and monitoring, we added configuration management, as well as we have this application layer that provides you with a UI that makes self-manage much easier. We provide a CLI that allows you to interact very uh, easily with the Kafka cluster. Uh, but if you don't want to use our CLI, we also expose the API so you can connect your own IDE or your own CLI to this service. And we also provide something called the service binding. Basically, the service binding is an operator that what that allows you to do is that once you install that operator on an OpenShift cluster, it will make it very easy for you to connect a Kafka topic with a workload or an application living on an OpenShift cluster. And all of this is hosted and managed by Red Hat. So you don't have to worry about the infrastructure. The only thing you have to worry about is learning and using Kafka. So long names, short names, names. The name of our product, our official name of our product is Red Hat OpenShift Streams for Apache Kafka. But this is a very long name. So you're gonna hear us say OpenShift Streams, which is the preferred shortened version of the, of the product name. Uh, but you will also hear us say ROSA, which is basically the acronym. We try not to do that, but it, can ha it may happen. We also call it Manage Kafka or just Kafka. So if you heard us talk about this, it's all the same solution. We just kind of trying to make sure that we talk fast and we don't waste too much time with uh, the seven words name. So an overview of what you guys are gonna do today. So the first one, what you, we want you to do is to try our Kafka service, okay? The goals for this session are that you create and provision a fully managed Kafka instance. Second, we're gonna walk you through the process of deploying a Quarkus-based Java application on an OpenShift cluster. And we will give you access to that OpenShift cluster on something that we call the developer sandbox. Bernard will show you all around, all about it. And the guide that I share on the comments uh, of your screen uh, has more information about it. And then the third goal for today is connect your Quarkus application to the Kafka topic on your Kafka instance. So what do you need for today? The first thing that you need is you need to create a Red Hat account and have your credentials handy. The second one is that you need to request a Kafka instance on console.redhat.com. And the third thing is that you need to request an OpenShift cluster on developers.redhat.com. It sounds like a, dot, a lot, but we're gonna be able to manage gladly. Everything is you, it's very wizard based. Uh, so it'll be easy for you to create each one of these environments. Links. So the first one, the link on the left is our Slack link. So that's a DevNation Slack channel that we have. There's a lot of conversations happening in there, different workshops. Uh, we not only talk about Kafka, we talk about other technologies that uh, Red Hat is pushing to the market, open source, our products is a very nice channel to be in. If you have questions, uh, you have feedback or anything you wanna let us know, please just go ahead, uh, register on the on that Slack channel and we will be there to talk to you. The second link on the right, it has all the instruction links and useful comment, comma, commands for you to run this workshop, okay? If you go to that a link and to that guide, just go directly to section four, where you're gonna you can follow all the steps uh, with us. One quick thing, I don't know if I'm taking too long. I'll hurry, Bernard, because I know we are short in time. But um, I just wanted to give you some uh, um, a gra graphic representation of what we're doing today. Okay, so on the left side, you're gonna have the developer sandbox. So on the developer sandbox, what you're gonna do is to get a Red Hat OpenShift dedicated cluster. Once you have that cluster in that environment, you can do a, a few things. You can install your Quarkus app there. It can live there, it can run there. The second thing that you have there is something that we call the quick stars. And basically quick stars are just guided instructions for you to follow so you can complete the workshop today. Okay, they're very easy to follow, it's step by step. The third thing you're gonna have on the develop on this developer sandbox or OpenShift cluster is uh, the CLI. We have the specific CLI 
for our product that basically um, has all the commands available for you to create Kafka instances, topics, and even declare permissions or authentication for the Kafka topics. We're going to bind that Quarkus app with our topic. So on the right side, you have your OpenShift strings for Apache Kafka instance, so your Kafka instance dedicated to you. And in there, you're going to create a topic, and that topic is the one that you're going to connect with your Quarkus app. Three quick starts are what we're going to complete today. First one, how to create your Kafka instance. Second one, get everything that you need to make sure that you can connect the OpenShift dedicated cluster to your Kafka instance. And finally, we're going to do the connection of the app with the topic. OK, so now I'm going to pass it to Bernard, OK, who is our um, person today to show us a little bit more about the workshop. OK, thank you, Jennifer. So. Uh... Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. For me, it's definitely good evening. Uh, so yeah, let's walk through the different steps of uh, of getting acquainted with uh, with our, our Kafka service. So the only thing we're going to need today is actually a browser. So what you see on my screen is a still empty window of Chrome Incognito. So the first thing that you're going to do is create a Kafka instance. So for that, I need to go to console.redhat.com, which is our hybrid uh, cloud console. It will ask me to log in. It doesn't. Well, let me log out so that it asks me to log in because that will be probably OK. So it asked me to log in. So if you don't have a Red Hat account yet, you will have to go to this link here, register for a Red Hat account, and then Create a Reddit account, fill in some fields, and then you will you will be able to go back. I have a Red Hat account, so I can immediately proceed. So let me get the details of my account. So my username and my password. Okay, and this brings me to what we call the hybrid cloud console for which you can do a lot of things from here. You can manage OpenShift uh, clusters. You can do things with RHEL, but we are interested in our application services today. So if I click on that tab, you will see a number of things here. You could do try OpenShift streams for Apache Kafka. The, the other way to get there is you click on streams for Apache Kafka and then Kafka instances. And normally, I should not have an instance. I don't have an instance, so I can create one. I will create an instance. An instance needs a name. Let's call it definition. Uh, it, it's running on AWS. There is no choice here. But I can choose the region. And I think I'm going to, because I'm in Belgium, so I'm going to take Ireland as closest to me. And then. Multi availability zone, that's not really a choice neither. So it's multi by default. And then I can, here on the left, on the right, sorry, you see some uh, instance information. So this is like an eval uh, program. So that means that those clusters will, those Kafka instances will stay up for two days. And they have some limitations about how many connections, how many partitions, stuff like that. But let's say that those limitations are liberal enough so that you can do serious things with it if you want. So the main limitation is that the cluster stays up for 48 hours, and after that, it's destroyed. So let's create an instance. And now it's creation pending. That should take a couple of minutes, and then it should go into the real creation. In the meantime, I can go to the, uh, to the developer sandbox, which I'm going to do in another tab. So and I already prepared the link here. So that's developers.redhat.com slash developer sandbox. So developer sandbox is like a big shared OpenShift cluster. And with a Red Hat account, you can get a share of that cluster. So you get a couple of namespaces in that cluster for, I think, 60 days. Uh, and you can use that, that, 
that's based on the cluster to experiment with OpenShift and do things. So if I go to that link, I see here, get started in the sandbox. And then another link that says, launch your developer sandbox for Red Hat OpenShift. And that should normally bring me to, oh, no, nope, another one, start using your sandbox. So my sandbox is provisioned, so I can now start using it. And that should bring me to the login screen of the dev sandbox. I just used it like two minutes ago. That's why it does not ask me to log in. But normally you should see a login screen with one button that says Dev Nation. Just click on that and you should be in. So it brings us to the normally to the developer, uh, the developer view. Uh, the first time you will probably see a empty topology. So from here we can go to our quick start. So if I click on the add link here. And you see number of panes here. The one that we're interested in today is built with guided documentation. And then you see here like view all quick starts. And then we see number of quick starts. So there are more than just working with uh, Strange for Apache Kafka, but we can filter them out by typing Kafka. And then you will see that basically you have two, uh, Every, every quick start is present like two times. Uh, this is like a temporary situation. The ones that we're interested in today is are the ones that have like this rocket icon. So there are four of them. Uh, getting started, using Kafka Cut, connecting, and, this, and binding your Quarkus application. So they're in alphabetical and not in logical order. So we are going to start with the getting started one. So I can... If I click on that on that uh, on that pane, so you uh, as a window will open on the side, and which guides us through the uh, through the quick start. So we start by normally inspecting the Kafka instance. So for that, let me quickly go back. But I see that I might have an issue here because no, oh, it's still. Right then it should more or less be ready. It's still creating. Let's give it a minute more because otherwise I will have to resort. I have a pre-created instance, uh, but that means that I need to log out and log in again, which is not a big deal, but because uh, it's under another account. So, but this is maybe taking a little bit too long. Let's refresh once more. Yeah, I think it's better if I move to my other account because there I have it prepared already. So let's do that. That means that I can close that window. I can also close this one. Oh, no, there we go. It's ready. So it took four minutes. That's normal, between four and five minutes. So I have my Kafka instance ready. So, But now I went out of my developer sandbox. So I'm going to do that again. Sorry for that. Red Hat, Red Hat, dot com, developer sandbox. Okay, so get started. Same sequence here. Start using your sandbox. Okay, back to my Develop console and my my uh, my quick start is still open. So the first thing that we're gonna do is basically uh, have a look at our Kafka instance. So if I go back to the window, so my uh, the the cloud console, you can see I have a Kafka instance. It's called Dev Nation. If I click on this kebab icon on the right, I can see some details about it. So you can see it's running on AWS in Ireland. It has an ID. I'm the owner of it, the owner of it. And then in connection, you will see a number of connection details. So to connect to a Kafka instance, you need a bootstrap server, so which is a URL. 
So this is the URL of my uh, Kafka instance, which by the way, I'm going to copy that because I'm going to need that in a couple of seconds. And I'm going to paste that in a text editor that I have ready here on the site. From here, I can create service account. So the Kafka instance is secured, which is normal for a cloud service. You don't want everybody just to be able to access it. So it's secured through service account. So you need, uh, and then we use Sezzle OAT beer or Sezzle Plain as uh, authentication protocol. So from here, I can create a service account. So let's do that quickly. So I can call it Devnation as well. Okay, and then a, a service account has a client ID and a client secret, which you need to copy as well, especially the client secret, because you won't be able to get to it afterwards. So I'm going to copy both of them. Although I think this is more needed for the second quick start, which we're going to skip today. If you use Kafka Cut, you will need that particular service account in the quick start that we're going to do, the binding. A new uh, one, a quick uh, a service account will be created uh, pro pro programmatically, but I'm still gonna paste all this. You never know. Okay, so and then I can say I have copied client ID and the secret, and that gives me a service account. Okay, so if I now look into the window of service accounts. You should see I have a service account. Okay. So that's kind of the first step. That's uh, and the second step. So we have created a service account. So so we did all this. So I didn't call it my service account. I called it definition, but it, that's just a name. So the last step of that first quick start is about setting permissions. So by default, the uh, so it's not only secured by service accounts, but we also use a uh, uh, role-based access. And by default, so basically you can just uh, a service account without additional permission can just describe a, top, uh, a Kafka cluster and not do nothing more. So uh, you cannot start consuming or producing messages from a Kafka cluster. For that, you need to set a specific permission. So that can be that is done in the Cloud Console as well. So if I click on the instance on the name of my Kafka instance, this is going to open a number of tabs here. So, oh, let's, okay, this is not fun. This should not happen. So, Okay, that seems better. Let's go to access. So you see this is the default access, which is not a lot. You can describe a Kafka instance, you can describe consumer groups, and you can def describe topics. So actually, you can do almost nothing with that. So to be able to use or uh, actually use our Kafka cluster, we're going to have to give some additional permissions. So we can do a number of things here. You can do that per service account, but here to... Uh, to save us some time, we're gonna do we're gonna give some permission to all accounts. So that means the service accounts I already have, plus all the ones I might create in the future. Okay, so and then I can uh, give some uh, some uh, permissions here. So I'm gonna give permission to topics. I'm gonna give permission to all the topics. So I will use. A wild card here, sorry. Wild card. Okay, so that means all topics. And I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna keep that to a low, and then I'm gonna give it all permissions. Okay. Um, and I'm gonna do the same for consumer groups. Okay, consumer groups is Yes, so wild, oh, 
I don't think that's okay. Uh, it's just star. I don't have to type the yes, allow, and again, all permissions. So that means I can I can consume and produce to all topics and use whatever consumer groups I want when I consume. I can save that. And so this, this, uh, this new, those new, uh, those new permissions are added to my access list. Okay, so that was basically what is described in this. Uh, oh yeah, I could do transactional IDs as well. I do. We don't use transactional IDs here, so this is more optional. Okay, so that I've done as well. So I can go to the next step. Oh, this is, if you want to keep that cluster during two days and maybe do other things with that, just keep in mind, those are very loose permissions, right? So uh, you might want to fine-tune them uh, late, later on. So if that would be a production system, you would definitely want to fine-tune them and do more expli explicit permission per individual serve, serve accounts. But for what we want to do here, that's more than enough. Okay. So yes, that's all done. So now I can create a topic. So creating topic can be done from the UI as well. So I'm gonna do more or less what's what is here, except that I'm gonna name my, my topic prices because that's the name of the topic that my Quarkus application expects. So I don't I won't have to come back here and create yet another topic later on. Okay. So I can go back to my uh, to my UI here, and I go to the topic step, and then I can do create topic, and then I have like a wizard. So a topic has a name. That's it. I will call. I will use prices here, and then you can uh, choose the number of partitions. So partitions have everything to do with scalability. So one topic consists of one or more partitions, can be hundreds if you want. If you really want to scale out to the max, it can be hundreds of partitions. For this exercise, one is okay. So uh, we can leave this to one partition. And then the retention time, so those are the defaults for the managed, uh, for, uh, the managed service. So retention time is a week, so everything that you post, that you produce to your Kafka topics will be there for a week and retention size is unlimited. So that's fine as well for those quick starts. If you do real stuff with it, you might want to fine tune this as well. A week is more than enough here because my cluster go, it, it goes away after two days anyway, so, okay. So I'm gonna keep that. And then this is not something I can change today, uh, but like every topic has, every partition, every topic has three replicas and I need, to a minimum of two in-sync re replicas to get an acknowledgement when I produce messages. But those are fixed values uh, for uh, for Kafka streams. So if I do finish and I go back to my topics pane, you see that now I have a topic called prices. And so this concludes this part of the quick start. So, and I think the complete quick start. So yes, the new Kafka topic is listed in the topics table. So we can do next. So normally the next uh, quick start is using Kafka cut, but for the sake of time, we're gonna skip that one. Uh, so I'm gonna, so normally what it does, it, it uh, deploys a tools image so you can get uh, access to Kafka Cut. You use Kafka Cut, which is like a command line tool to work with Kafka to connect to your Kafka instance. You produce some messages and you consume some messages. So you can go through this in your own time later on if if you want. So I'm going to quickly click through all this. Yes, next. Well, I can actually go to the last one and do yes and next. And that brings me to the next one, which I'm going to go through. And that start connecting your Reddit OpenShift streams for Apache Kafka to, uh, to OpenShift, okay? So for that, we need to do a number of things. We need a tool 
for that, so we're going to use the, the ROSE uh, CLI, command line tool. So ROSE stands for Red Hat uh, OpenShift Application Services. So normally that's a tool that you would install on your own laptop and just go from your command line. Uh, in this kind of, in these sessions here, we want to avoid that you have to install anything yourself. Uh, so actually we're gonna we're gonna use a prepared image that we're gonna deploy on the developer sandbox to actually uh, and that has uh, the rose tools and other tools installed so that we can use them from there. okay? So that is the first uh, the first step. So uh, you should check that you're in the dev. So in the dev project, so you have two projects when you're in developer sandbox. You have like one that's called dev, another one that's called stage. So, well, actually, it's this one dev nation dev that I need. Yes, that's fine. So and then from the uh, from the add pane here in the developer thing, I can do. Uh, I should be able to. Oh, is there used to be? No, that's there used to be a. a pane that allows you to add a add a uh, or is it this one it's not no it's not samples no okay this is not fully expected there used to be a pane where you could add directly from an image This is okay. Let's. Uh... Oh, that's that's annoying because if we can't do that, it's not because I'm in the wrong project, right? Because my view is a bit weird here as well. I should not see those other project. Let me refresh this and see if that's that's not really. Oh, I can see it from here. Whoa, this is this is very this is a bit confusing because this does not correspond to my to the user I'm normally logged in. But that's not fine. So you should see this screen. Okay, and this is the pane that I'm looking for. So add from container images. Okay, and then I can paste an image, and the name of the image is in the quick start. So it's this one. Okay, so let's do this. And he's gonna check that the image exists, and I can I can leave all the rest deploying this fine. I don't need a route because I'm gonna use actually eternal directly in that container, so I can create that deployment, and that should now deploy a container. So it's downloading the image. That will take a couple of seconds, and then from the moment the circle is dark blue, my container is deployed. And from there, I should be able to uh, go into a terminal. So if I click into the circle here and I go to the pot, that's the details of that pot. The last step here says terminal. Okay. That opens the terminal directly in that container. That container has the... Uh, the road CLI, so I can do roads version and it will give me the version of the road CLI that is installed. So we can now use a row CLI from within that window. Okay, so I've successfully accessed the CLI too. I can go to the next. So here we're gonna actually use the row CLI to connect to. To connect my Kafka instance to my OpenShift pro project, so we're gonna do something which might seem a little bit funky here because we're gonna have to juggle a little bit with tokens. So normally the row CLI, when you use that on your laptop in a terminal, it will do a browser-based login because it uses OIDC and OAuth 
So it's going to do a browser-based login. From within a terminal in OpenShift, you cannot do that. So, but we can also log in with a token, a token that I can obtain from uh, console.rehat.com. So if I do here, console.rehat.com, I'm going to paste that, open a new tab here, and then do OpenShift token. It's on a show me that window here. And then if I click the load token button, it should give me a token. So that's the token that we need. So if I copy that token and I go back into my tools container here and I do rows login token and then I paste that token. I should log in. And I now logged in as Peter is on Dev Nation. So for instance, now I can see I can verify that I can reach my cluster. Yes. So if I do Rose Kafka list, you can see my cluster here. Okay. So another thing that we need is we need to be logged in in OpenShift itself, which doesn't happen automatically when you open a terminal in a container. That container is not is that terminal is not logged in into OpenShift. So we need to do this as well. And for that, we need another token. And that token is an OpenShift token that we can get directly from OpenShift. So if I go here where my name is in my uh, OpenShift dedicated, and I do copy login command, that's gonna open a second window, I can log in and then click on display token. And then I've got like this whole login command that I can copy. And this is what's gonna log me in OpenShift, okay? So paste this, command, paste, okay. I logged in and this is now annoying because this now says that I'm in another project. Okay, guys, um, I think my browser is confused here. I'm gonna log out, or out of my uh, my dev sandbox and log in again because this is this is not normal. So he's confused between my two accounts. So let me log out. Okay. Let me log in again, and then let me see what as which user I'm logged in. Now I'm in the Dev Nation one, so that's better. That means that I will have to redo the uh, because my topology is probably empty. Okay, so let me very quickly redo the thing with the uh, with the. Uh, with the tools image. So uh, let me first get to my quick start so that I can copy paste all things. So uh, where is it? Let's do Kafka here. Okay, I was not binding, but connecting. That's the one, access required CLI tools. Add from a container image. I can, so this is gonna take like, 20 seconds, and I'll be on my way again. Okay, good. And then we the route. Let's do this. Let's, yeah, I need to download that image again. Okay, that was quick. So here, okay, my pot my terminal, I'm gonna redo the rows login token. I still have my token window open here so I can recopy that one and paste it. Paste and I should be logged in. Rows, cuff. 
this just to check. Yes, that's fine. So now I can, I should be able to do this one and everything should be fine. Paste. And there we go. And I'm in logged in into BTISON, Dev Nation, Dev, which is my current project. That's already a lot better. Okay. So uh, I don't know this. Yes. So next. Uh, I did the OC login. Yes. So now the next thing I can do is actually do a cluster connect command, which will actually connect, uh, actually it will create a custom resource called a Kafka connection in that namespace that contains all the details for application to be able to use those details to connect to my Kafka instance. So if I do rose cluster connect here, rows cluster connect, Gonna ask what I want, what type of service. So apart from managed Kafka, we also have managed service reg registry, but today we're using Kafka. Uh, I'm gonna connect to my definition instance. That's the name of my Kafka instance. And yes, I want to continue. And then he, that requires the same token, my offline OpenShift to, uh, cloud uh, cloud.com token. So that's this one. Okay. So I'm going to paste that token here. Okay. And now I do. And so this is going to, so it's going to create a number of things. It's going to create a token secret with Azure's token. It's going to create a service account secret, which has the details of a service account. So it created this command, this rose command, created a new service account for me. Uh, it has already permissions, so I don't have to do that. All my service accounts have permissions, and now normally it's gonna it's gonna waiting to create a Kafka Connect instance. In the meantime, while this is ongoing, I can indeed check that in my service accounts here. I have a new service account. Let's refresh my window. Okay, so that's the service account that was created like one minute ago by my rose command. Okay, this is not good. To bind, you need to serve up. On a Kafka resource definition has been created so normally i should have oc get connection uh, i have one and i can do it's called dev nation it's OEML. And this looks okay, so not sure why you said that. There was an error, that's all kinds. Yeah, that sounds good. So uh, let's, let's continue. Okay, so now I'm ready to actually start using this custom resource to bind applications, okay? So, uh, so yeah, you can inspect the Kafka connection. Already did that. I can do. Oh yeah, another another way to do it is OC describe, but that's probably do. OC describe Kafka connection. It should give me the same. Okay. Good. But no, it's not good. It's missing a lot of things here. It apparently cannot connect. So normally I would see here the bootstrap host and the whole thing. So something is definitely going wrong. 
but I don't know what. Let's see if I can bind that again. No, that I don't need to do. I need to let's see what. Yeah, it's Africa. It's a nation. I want to continue. Yes. And now it says it already exists. So let's do it. We need Kafka connection. The nation. Okay. So connect. Yes, yes, continue. And now it's actually trying to connect. That seems to be a bit of an issue here. That shouldn't take so long. Unless there is something not no, this says it's ready. Let's see if the ID C6, yeah, that's the one that I had. Now this is definitely not not going as expected here. That's annoying because that breaks the rest of, we cannot continue without that, that, uh, that CR. No. Let me see. I'm going to delete it once again and then do with dash V and maybe that gives us a clue what's uh, not, not dash V. Yes. 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 Hmm. What I can do to, can I do that to continue? No, I cannot do that to continue. I need, really need that. Well, I could do it from command line. I can do it from command line. You, uh, let's see if I can do that. If I connect, uh, if I use that rows, I have my rows here. Rows, uh, let me first log in into the login command. I can use that from here as well. Let me first do because that's something I need to do for, because I have like a bit of weird environment here. Yes. Okay, and then I can paste that command. So that should, yes, I'm logged in here. Resize. So I can do, and I can do a rows uh, login token. Uh, that token that I find here. Yes, and I should be able to do a rows. Connect uh, cluster. What was it again? It's uh, cluster connect. Let's see if that works better here. Rows. Kafka. Okay. Now he says that you cannot find my. Oh yeah, look at this, this is not the same. <gasps> I have the impression that this whole thing is horribly confused. Close log out, I'm gonna log out specifically. I'm gonna log in.
Okay. I think we're a bit stuck here. So uh, let me check my Kafka connection that I had here. C6 and then 24G. Yes, that's the correct one. So why can't it connect to that one? Okay, let's... Sebastian had a suggestion in the chat here. Let's see if it's that one, but paste, but I'm pretty sure that. Oh, Overland user session not found. Okay, I think I need to log in again here as well. Could it be that my token is not valid anymore? Let's refresh that window. Okay, this is, oh my God, this is all very interesting. Okay, let me find my user. Username. See, that's the correct one here. Yes. Okay, I got another token. Uh, Open paste. Okay, I'm logged in. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, I probably need to delete, so let's see, okay, I'm going to delete that one again and try another time. If that doesn't work, then there is something more serious going wrong with this whole setup and we won't be able to continue, I'm afraid. So, push close to connect. Service. Kafka designation. MBTIS. No, that doesn't seem to. That takes too long. So in the meanwhile, I'm chatting with one of my colleagues and he says that he can recreate. So apparently we have a general issue here because Evan can, my colleague, just has the same issue at the moment. So uh, it seems we have a general issue with our service because we're not we're not able to really connect to it, it seems. No, that I can try once more from command line. So let's do a logout first. Even logout doesn't work, interesting here. And with my new token, I had here. Okay. Uh, Rose Kafka. 
just name the nation. Yeah, that's twenty four G. That's correct. Yes. So let's do it from here then. So let's see. Let's see which project I am. Yes. So I can see OC delete Kafka connection. Nation. Okay, and now we do those. Connect. Yes. Now it says that it's looking for a different Kafka instance. That's oh, but that I think I know how, how to fix that. If you give me just one second, I think I have to do the Kafka use here as well. Uh, what was that here? He's probably still thinking that I'm using an older one. So let's see if that works. Okay. Yes. Okay. You want to continue? Yes. And let's see now. He manages to connect because if that doesn't work then we have a general issue then we cannot really continue no so this binding thing there seems to be an issue here uh which we're gonna have to investigate now what i could do at least try to do maybe that will work i hope that that will work is use go back to the kafka cut quick start and quickly see if we can connect through kafka cut so uh then at least we have yeah because this is definitely not gonna work so let's go back here uh and let's go back to my quick starts uh, add sorry, add quick starts, quick starts, and let's do the Kafka cut one quickly, just to make sure that we can kind of Kafka cut is on the same image, so I don't have to do all this. I should be able to do right here in the uh, so in the uh, terminal, I should have cut, yes. So uh, the two is present, so I can use it. So normally what I need, yes, I can, yes. So I'm gonna set some environment var variables with the things that I copied before. Paste. Bootstrap server, and I've copied it here. Okay, I need the user, which is the this my client ID from the service account that I created before. It's good that I created that, no? So uh, user, that's this one. Paste, yes, and then export the password, which is a secret. Paste. Okay, so that's all this. And then, yeah, yeah, that does work. And then now I can to, I can produce, the only thing that I'm going to change is, my topic is called prices, so let's, let's, let's uh, use prices here, uh, prices, before I copy that command, Okay. 
So that should connect directly to my Bootstrap server using plain Sazzle with username and password coming from my service account. And in producer mode, that's the P here at the end. So if I click enter, I should now be able to produce to my, my first message. And the second message. Third message. So I'm now sending messages to my prices topic. So that seems to work fairly well. So, and now I can do the same command. So I did like a couple of messages and now I should be able to consume with Kafka cut as well. So actually it's exactly the same command, except that I'm gonna at the end, Uh, sorry, I need to go like this. Okay, at the end, I need to change the C, the P in a C for consumer mode. And that should normally then connect to my Kafka instance and consume my three messages. Yes. So uh, I can connect. It's not my Kafka instance that's uh, where that has a problem. It's apparently the... Uh, the uh, operator that that uh, that creates the uh, the Kafka Connect instance, so the row the rows operator apparently has an instance uh, an, an issue here because it cannot really connect. So with that, I think it doesn't. So the actual binding I won't be able to then to then to demonstrate because I need a working Kafka Connect instance for that that has all the metadata which it can uh, it apparently cannot do so that means that we can as well uh, we can as well stop here i think so uh, i'm sorry for that so normally you should have a quarkus application that automatically binds to that kafka instance and starts consuming and, pro and and producing but it seems we have an issue with our operator at that handles all this at the moment so uh, so that's that's it for me. Again, sorry for not being able to actually show what I wanted to show. But that's a bit how things go in life, I think, with yeah. demos. So uh, yeah, yeah, that's it for me. Yeah, don't worry, Bernard. Um, even at the same issue, he was trying it. And um, DJ Maddy on the chat, I think he had an issue too. Yeah, uh, yeah, I saw that so, as well, yeah. yeah so, probably, uh, let me bring uh, even maybe more more info about. It. Not yet. I did ping some people to ask them um, could they take a look at the operator logs or its status in in the sandbox environment. Um, but I haven't heard back yet. But that's what it sure looks like. It looks like the operator is maybe having some trouble, like Bernard said. Yeah, yeah, that's probably true. I, I was trying myself as well, but I was trying the other way because you can bind now the the. The Kafka instance with your cluster directly from the sandbox by clicking manage service and then you just select your Kafka instance It's really nice by the way you don't have to do Kafka connect cluster anymore uh, but so um, let me quickly show that how how, how do you do that <laughs> you can so drag in, and drop in topology you do add uh, no add sorry add yes and then you go to uh, uh, you scroll to the manage services, manager, right? And then you unlock it with your token. That uh, yeah, you know token. what? I'm gonna do that in my other namespace here. So yeah, you can do that in your yes. Yeah. So and uh, you just have to unlock tokens. it with your token. The, the token. Yes. From I still still have my token here. And then you will see its magic. It will list your Kafka instance. The truth. <laughs> oh. Next, but maybe. You will face the same bug here. <laughs> I don't know. So what what should normally happen now? Well, is that the first time I do that? Yeah, yeah, I discovered that this week as well. Uh, well, once you have done that, you you uh, then you can just create your manage your your managed service connector, and it will find the the cluster for you, the the Kafka instance for you. You just have to drop down, select. But it looks yeah, but like it's. Uh, it seems it has a bit of an issue here as well. 
I think the issue is, yeah. So the issue is that the CR is not resolving or not finishing something yeah. like that. Yeah, it must yeah, be something yeah. like this, yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, timeout. So we got definitely connection problems here. With... Connection problems. But it, uh, we have reported it and you should. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So DJ Maddy is not, also not able to bind it. So try tomorrow, everyone. And it should probably work. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to report it then. So yeah, actually, if the operator comes back to life properly, right, you shouldn't even need to run another command. It should just update automatically, actually, the results. Exactly. It yeah. should work on side. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Hey, uh, anyway, Bernard, thank you so much. Uh, You're welcome. And uh, thank you, Ivan, for showing up and say hello. And thank you, everyone. And don't forget to go on the Slack channel. That's the place to go where we can chat, share links, and stuff like that. Um, see you next time. Bye, everyone. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you. Yeah, bye.